you love coming to McDonald's for breakfast. Because there's one near your house and it's cheap and convenient. Oh, our food is bland and greasy and leaves you with a unique sort of stomach ache, but it's cheap and convenient. And as long as you're here, you might as well get a coffee because it's very cheap and you're an addict. If anyone asked you, you wouldn't say you preferred McDonald's coffee to any other fast food coffee. You're just here already, so it's convenient. And did we mention cheap? Well, McDonald's coffee just got a whole lot more convenient because now bottled McCafe drinks are available in a convenience store near you. That's right. Now you don't even have to set foot in McDonald's to settle for McDonald's coffee. No, we're not bottling the drink you really like from us. Just the drink that you get from us because you're addicted to the drink and you happen to be here. And now it's everywhere you happen to be, right next to the bottles of coffee from the places you actually go out of your way to get coffee from. But the bottled McCafe drinks are just so very convenient. McCafe in a bottle, truly the most convenient way for the Coca-Cola company to get into the coffee business. Are you awake at two in the morning and needing a meal? Well, why not come down to Jack in the Box where we serve approximations of meals? Hi, it's me, the even creepier fast food clown. Gaze into my soulless eyes. eyes. And at my Jack in the Box, you can shove all manners of things into your mouth. While other fast food places have half decent burgers, we have a quarter decent burger for three fifths of the price. But we don't stop there. Our menu has mediocre versions of all your favorite foods. Yeah, we'll throw egg rolls on the menu. Try to stop us. Or why not try our tacos, which we can call tacos thanks to the Fair Use Act, which allows us to appropriate the concept of tacos for the purpose of parody. Are you tired of other fast food chains treating chicken sandwiches and hash browns as separate things? Sick of having to put it together yourself? What is this, Ikea? Here at Jack in the Box, we did the work for you. Enjoy your chicken sandwich with a hash brown on it. This is what you wanted, America! And everything on the menu legally counts as food. That's right, the FDA has not yet ruled my Junior Jumbo Jack as completely unsafe to insert into your body. And since we surpass the bare minimum standards of edibility, we'll let you wash down the food with any flavor of soda. Except for the most of them, which we'll probably be out of when you get here. Some of our locations even have Wi-Fi that sometimes works, and we'll let you use it if you snack on something. Maybe if you're lucky, we'll have an outlet and you can charge your devices. But only only if you eat here. You were really counting on that Panera next door to have outlets, but it's one of those weird ones where the outlets are covered out of spite. But we're here, waiting for you. All you gotta do is buy some food. Look, we have curly fries! Do In-N-Out or Five Guys have curly fries? Do they? Do they have f***ing curly fries? And yes, almost everything on our menu looks and sounds disgusting, but I know you. You're laughing about how gross this all is, but deep down you're thinking, you know, it's been a while since I've had Jack in the Box, and it's probably not that bad, right? I remember kinda liking it when I was younger. Honestly, I could go for Jack sometime soon. You can't wait to try this, can you? You're craving my menu and you're telling yourself it's ironic, but no, this weird junk food is what you actually want. I have you right where I want you, because our meals are designed to be exactly what hits the spot for anybody high enough to make it through our commercials. Jack in the box. At least we're not Carl's Jr. Everyone loves junk food because it's tasty and convenient at the expense of health and quality. But have you ever wanted a junk food that was specifically engineered not only to be less tasty than the alternative, but also wildly inconvenient to everyone involved while still being neither healthy nor quality? Then why not come on down to your local Starbucks and drink a Frappuccino? The drink that ruins every life it touches. Sure, you can get an iced latte from Starbucks and your barista would have it ready in four to six steps. Or you could spend a little extra to get a Frappuccino, which would take a whopping nine to 11 steps, some of which take longer than the latte steps, but still have to be done just as quickly. 
This level of stress is reserved for Frappuccinos and Frappuccinos alone. It's no wonder baristas everywhere consider ordering a Frappuccino to be an act of bullying. Why so much effort for a drink that's desperately trying to taste almost as good as something you get from a simple soft serve machine? Because Frappuccinos were invented by Satan himself for the sole and exclusive purpose of torturing baristas stuck at the particular circle of hell. That is, working at Starbucks. Yes, Beelzebub himself concocted this plan to put baristas through the ringer so that you can have a milkshake at 5 in the morning. And don't kid yourself, you're drinking a milkshake. It literally has the word frap in the name. It's a milkshake, just with fake ice cream. So it's a bad milkshake. But don't worry, when you order a Frappuccino, you're not just making a barista stay worse, you're ripping yourself off. Because Frappuccinos are the absolute worst dollar value on the entire menu. And that's saying something. Because when you order a Frappuccino, you're paying more than you would for an equivalent ice latte, but you're getting so much less. An ice latte has anywhere from one to three espresso shots, the gold standard of a caffeine boost in the public consciousness. A frappuccino has two to four pumps of a watered down instant coffee that probably has some caffeine. A grande ice mocha has four full pumps of chocolate, but a grande mocha frappuccino only has three half pumps. Hell, a tall ice mocha has more chocolate than a venti mocha frappuccino. And let's not get started on the milk discrepancy. No matter what it is you come to Starbucks for, there is way, 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 way less of it in a Frappuccino. Unless you come for ice, I guess. There's the same amount of ice. So what makes up most of the contents of a Frappuccino? Gunk! Adhesive gunk meant to give it that milkshake texture without actually giving you any decent ingredient. So gulp down that Frappuccino for your daily dose of sugar glue. Some special Frappuccinos also have whipped cream on the bottom, thus taking up valuable space that could go to the actual beverage. So you get even less of the drink. You might as well put your $5 straight into the blender. And I know what you're thinking. Surely that's some cost-cutting measure so they can make a tall and charge you for the grande. But nope, they still have to make the full grande. And whatever doesn't fit in the cup just gets dumped down the drain. It doesn't save the company money. It's just wasteful for waste's sake. Because Howard Schultz hates people even more than he loves money. And he really loves money. Tough break, people. If you wanted Howard Schultz to like you, you should have tried being money instead. So order that caramel ribbon crunch and watch the miserable barista make your drink and flush a good third of it down because the boss says so. The barista's not happy, the customer's not happy, only corporate is happy. But hey, corporate can afford to flush ingredients down the drain. Hell, why not start off with even fewer pumps of everything and pour even more down the drain? Let's fill as little of the cup as possible with the thing the customer thinks they're ordering. Who cares? These drinks are in no way for the customer's benefit. They exist solely and exclusively for barista torture. And yeah, I get it. You're ordering a Frappuccino because you don't like coffee, but you need caffeine and you forgot that soda exists. Or you're ordering one of those cream-based ones, which don't have caffeine, because you forgot that real ice cream exists. Okay, there's literally no justification for ordering a cream-based Frappuccino, but most of you are probably getting a Frappuccino so you can get some coffee without tasting any coffee. So you can use the flavors that are bad for you in order to help you stomach the taste of coffee, which is also bad for you. Frappuccinos damage your body to allow you to stomach the sensation of damaging your body. But because Starbucks never passes up a good opportunity for some torture, the adhesive gunk in the coffee-based Frappuccinos goes out of its way to add just a hint of a coffee aftertaste to your drinks that already have a little bit of coffee in them, just so you can more fully notice how hard we're trying to make this not taste like coffee. That's just one example of the f***ed up mind games that you can expect from a Frappuccino. Are you trying to wean yourself off of caffeine? Do you want something that still tastes like the coffee drinks you're used to getting, but in a decaf version? Well, there's no decaf frap roast. So to maintain the coffee contents that we're trying to downplay and upplay at the same time, decaf coffee frappuccinos use decaf espresso, which means you not only have to wait for the frappuccino making process and the blender, you also have to wait for the espresso machine, dragging out the process of making your drink for as long as humanly possible, while also delaying the orders of everyone who just ordered a latte, and throwing things off for both the hot bar barista and the cold bar barista. Also, you can get a drink that tastes just enough like coffee to remind you that it's trying not to taste like coffee while offering none of the supposed value of coffee. All while your baristas silently wonder why you didn't just go to the cold stone that is probably in the same plaza. Yes, with its wasteful ways, its frustrating procedure, and its bending over backwards to reduce value, a Frappuccino is the best way to stand up proudly and say, I hate coffee. I really hate baristas. And I kind of hate myself. And sure, maybe certain internet comedy video makers who used to be one of those baristas might be severely burning bridges here. And if the other work ever dries up, he's gonna regret not being able to be hired back by that corporate hellhole. But on the other hand, 
Maybe he wouldn't dare set foot behind that counter again if you gave him a 200% raise and a bonus to pay off all his debt. Because making these fucking milkshakes broke his brain so badly that even all the health benefits in the world can't undo the scars left by making these evil drinks for ungrateful customers. Sure, a steady paycheck is nice, but at what cost to your soul? He just regrets that he didn't quit years earlier, before you started with all this special limited run bullshit, and that he didn't spend the past several years warning people against your diabolical drink, you greedy corporate douchebags. He hopes the entire damn company goes out of business and every last Starbucks in America is burned to the fucking ground, and then the earth is salted so that nothing more can grow. Honey, are you sure you want me to say all this? It's the only way to make the nightmare stop! Frappuccinos, a little slice of hell, frozen over.